Hi everyone, it's Bobby. I am here with another design team project for Country Craft Creations. This project is a stacked envelope journal and it is using the exclusive collection called Music Box. And this is a series of six repurposed envelopes over a journal. Here is the back. Isn't that paper beautiful? This collection is all in earth tones, a real soft green and pink. So when you open the front, you have the envelopes that alternate back and forth. And these are just ones that I had in the mail that I've uh, covered. In the first envelope, I made a pocket with a small tag. It has a photo mat or a journaling spot on the back. Goes back in the pocket. The back side has the piano key, design paper, it's very pretty. Now, I didn't add anything to it, I thought it was very pretty on its own. Uh, the second one has a top tuck and a side, you can use both and I'll show you that in a larger envelope in a minute on another one. This little tag pulls out and it has a little pocket with a couple of the cut aparts in it. And I stamped on the back of it, be strong, go with your heart, and believe in miracles because anything can happen. I thought that was so pretty. And I just layered a bunch of scraps, small pieces of the design paper together to cover this envelope. And then on the back, I cut this from the, um, I guess it's called a header sheet or whatever it is, I don't know. Anyway, it's the front sheet that shows you a collection, a little snippet of all of the papers in, in the design collection. Uh, the third envelope has a large pocket on the front with one of the cut aparts, and you could tuck something up under this. And it has a large tag, which is from the front sheet as well, and it has a photo mat on the back, and then I made a small tag using the... Um, Heartfelt Creation Tag Die from Country Craft Creations, and I just love this little top scalloped edge. I think that's pretty. I tied it with some gold twine and put a little dragonfly on there. I added one of the cut aparts that says, where, where words fail, music speaks. And then I added a little button and some greenery. And that goes back in this pocket. Like that. And then we have a top loading pocket, which would hold a larger tag, but I just put a small graphic 45 tag in there. And this is just washi tape that I had in my stash. And I added a photo mat or a journaling spot on the back with a little Tim Holtz flower. I'm trying to use up some stuff in my stash as well. So that goes back in there. On the back side, I cut a slit to make an extra pocket, and I show you in the tutorial exactly how to make that. And then I have a small tag with another one of the Tim Holtz uh, dies or um, die cuts, and it says "Collect Beautiful Moments." And I just stamped on the back of it a little flower, and that goes in there. And this is envelope four, one of the cut aparts I added uh, for a little tuck spot, and I put a couple of the cut aparts in there. With this collection, you get um, one full sheet of the cut aparts on the sheet, and then you get the second one already cut out, and that's what these are. And I just inked around them with some black soot. And then I put a little tag in there with a die cut, and it says, You are a work of art, and it's just plain on the back. And these, this little design is from a punch I had in my stash. That goes in there. And I left it plain on the back, but there's room you could add something there if you wanted to. In this one, I created a little band, and I used the cut apart about Fisher pianos I thought was appropriate because there's pianos over here. And I had this little envelope in my stash, and I just added some of the die cuts in there. And it would hold more. I don't have it glued shut. It's just folded. And just tucks back under there. Then we have, this is the one where I said in the beginning on this, this one where you had a top and a side loading. That's what this one is. So this one has a little side pocket with a small tag. 
and then the top loading larger tag and I didn't add anything to these because whoever gets this um, project may want to add journaling or photos or other embellishments and since there's not a lot of room inside these envelopes I thought I would just leave them blank so there's room for them to add whatever they want to add and this goes back in there and then on the back side you have a graphic 45 tag that makes a tuck spot and you can put more things there again I used some Tim Holtz die cuts and just added them for decoration and pocket number six this is also a tuck spot where you could put some uh, a smaller tag or some die cuts and I have a large tag in there also for journaling or photos or more embellishments whatever the re person who gets it wants to put on it. Put it back in there if I get it started. There it goes. And then on the back side of that you have a fold out where you can add another journaling spot or photo in a large area here and here. So that is the stacked envelopes and they just alternate one on top of the other and then it ties back together which I'll do in a minute and when you open here on the side then you have your journal and I use the music paper here it's kind of bulky with the envelopes on the front of it but I just I left each of these plain so that you can add whatever you want plenty of journaling space in here these papers are just beautiful and there's a lot of lined paper for journaling places to add photos and other pockets if you wish now on some of them they were um, longer and very narrow and if I folded them this way then the writing would go that way or the lines also would go that way and I don't like that I want it to be in the correct orientation so I put two pieces together and I added a little art glitter glue and then washi tape so that I could make them larger and here's you can see the washi tape there this is splattered paper just um, tracing paper that I splattered with some Tim Holtz sprays and this is the center see what I mean if I had folded it the other way the lines would go this way and it looks kind of silly this is just a journal paper that I had in my stash and then we go through to the back half of it more lined paper and that's it that's the end of the journal so there's plenty of room for all kinds of embellishments journaling photos whatever you might want to add thank you for watching I would love to hear your comments and see your completed project if you decide to make this Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Good morning, everyone. It's Bobby, and I am starting a new project this morning. Something that is new to me, and I thought I would take you along for the ride. So let's have fun and craft. The first thing I have is a file folder, and in its normal orientation, it is like this, with your tab either at the bottom, the middle, or the top. The only ones I have are the bottom tabs, but it works fine. So what I did was scored in half to make more of a book and then I tried inking it with the with these daubers and it just it was this yucky gray color so I just took a new archival pad and I put a piece of paper down and I just went around all the edges and took the pad right to the folder so it got it really black which is what I wanted so it kind of makes like a little book and I need some more black along here I can see that right now and then I took score tape and I added it to the inside um, covered the entire thing with score tape and then I put down the music sheet paper that is from Tammy's collection called music box and this is going to be a little journal section in here and on the front is going to be a collection of envelopes now this is not my design I did not originate this it's been around for a long time I've seen them all over the internet and I thought they were so neat 
and I wanted to try it for myself. So that's what I'm doing today. Let me ink this edge up real quick again because I can see it's not completely covered black. And I want it to be all black. So, and I need a little bit more here. I'll touch that up in a minute. But my papers are going to go right to the edge. So I cut a piece of the green to put in here and I'm going to glue it all the way to the top. And I have a, a basic shape cut out. And I'll probably have a little trim work to do once I get it glued down. But I'm going to trim around there. And then I want to give you the game plan first. Then I'm going to add this paper here. And as long as the folder is not fastened shut, you can still open it. Once this is glued down, see, I'll be able to open it like this and trim around those edges so that it goes all the way to the top and has the same file folder edge. So that will be that piece. And then I have six envelopes that I'm going to attach. And they're going to be in graduated sizes. And I have blacked all of these are recycled envelopes that just return envelopes that come in bills and circulars and whatever. And just make sure that you don't rip them here on the edge when you open them because you're going to need the flaps. And I think from what I've seen on the internet, everybody is wrapping their envelopes all of them like this. And then attaching them all underneath this piece. Well, there, like that. So that they stack here. I was thinking about attaching because see how they kind of stick out a little bit? Not too bad, but they kind of, they don't lay completely flush. And then you have three on the opposite side that just kind of stagger like that. And they just overlap. So that's what I want to make, but what I'm thinking would be best, instead of wrapping all of the flaps together, is to stack one flap on top of the other, like this. And I want this one to go down farther and this one to come up a little higher. So you see all of the... And then just put this one under it. I'm thinking that will line up better. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll have this one will go up under, like that. And, oops, I want them to be staggered where you can see, and there will be paper under here covering that. Then this one will go on top of the second one, and this one will go on top of the third one, like that. So you'll have them layered. How about that? Actually, I think... I want this to be on top of that one, like that, and like this, and like this. Yep, that's what I want. And I did put a little piece of the design paper inside this envelope, and we'll go through those together. But doing it this way, once you attach them, <coughs> You can't add your design papers to the front of this one until you get this flap in place so that you cover it up. That's the way I'm going to do it. I don't know if that's the way it's been done in the past, but that's what I'm going to do. So, let me lay my envelopes aside for the moment, and I want to get them covered before I add them to this paper. So I'm not going to put it down just yet, but I do want to put the green in place. And, of course, my glue's in the other room where it's warmer, so let me grab that. Excuse me, cutie. Okay. 
Okay. It's getting cold in Texas again. We just can't get away from the winter weather. Oops. And my glue's running everywhere. I don't want that on there yet. I guess I got it too warm, didn't I? It sat in there all night. We just can't get our weather straightened out. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, that's running everywhere. I'm going to have to get a baby wipe out. Sometimes it does that, and I think it's the humidity and everything down here. It's, we're right on the water. I want that up higher. I'm going to open it out here. That'll make it easier. Put it right up on the edge. Because I can always trim it if I need to. Oh, I hear the baby. He's upset again. Now let me see if that's covered good enough. Yes, that looks fine. Don't want any bubbles under it. And then I can trim that off with my knife. Or my scissors, whichever. Really isn't that much to trim. A little bit right here. There's that. See a little bit peeking out right there. A little bit on this curve. Yeah, he's upset now. I hear him wailing back there. Kind of hard. Hard to get in this little crook here. I'll have to come at it from the other side, I think. There, I think I got it. And ink it up. some black soot. On. Well, it's not black soot. It's the archival black. And it did come from Country Craft Creations. Just in case you're curious. That's where most of my stuff comes from. It's not required, but that's pretty much where I shop. Okay. So now, when I close this, Off. I don't know why I did that. And <clears throat> what did I do with my pen? Did you guys see my pen? Ugh. I always lose it. There it is. I see the blue top peeking out. Okay. So, let's glue our envelopes together and do that. I think that needs to be first order business. Like I said, this is the first time I've made this, so we'll see. This is the right side. I just love this whole um, junk journal phenomenon, I guess is what you can call it. So I am going to add glue to this one. I want to make sure I'm getting them lined up where I want them, though. And I have a side pocket on this one and top pocket on this one. So where's my little third pocket? There it is. 
me see if that's where I want them. And this will go. I think I might want to trim these off a little bit. I'm going to glue these three together for now. overlapping a little. There we go. These envelopes are thin, so... And then this little... And while this was open, I just added a piece of design paper in there and then glued it shut at the bottom. <coughs> so I can leave that window visible. Okay. And I'm going to put this one right in the middle of that one or thereabouts. It's not exactly in the middle, but it's Make sure I don't have any overhang. Okay, there's those three. I'm going to move it up to the top. I need to get my position right on these. I think I want this one to be shorter. So let me take off my pencil so I don't cut too much off. cut it right here. I can always glue it shut at the bottom, that ain't no big deal. Okay, so if that one goes like this, then the second one, see I want them to stagger. The second one will go up under here, and it needs to be quite a bit smaller. So I'm going to cut this off. Actually, I think I'll cut it off at the top and get rid of that notch so I don't have two notches lined up together. And that will go in here. About like that. And then this one will go up under here. And then I'm going to make it smaller too. No. Down to the bottom. 
down like that. That will make me happy. I think. Okay. Alright, so that's how these three are going to go. So let me glue this one down. About here. And that's a mark for that one. Okay. to grab a hold right now. Take it right up to the edge. There's that one. And then we can glue this down. Sound good. Okay. That's how they're going to go. Now I can decorate them. I just thought it was such a neat concept. And uh, there will be ribbons attached under this so that when you... Um, oh, blue... something over that. So it will go like this, like this, like this, like this, and like this. Or vice versa. I think I want it the other way. I think I want this one down first. And then this one. And then that. That one, and that one, and that one. That way you'll see all the different layers. That'll be cool, huh? Okay, so now I can decorate all those. And this... I see something peeking out there. We might want a little notch right here, or maybe an angle. I think that would be cute to put an angle in there and make the pocket that way. So, I think I'll do that right now. I'm going to get my paper cutter and just put an angle on it. Just maybe, maybe an inch over. No, inch and a half. And down maybe... Two inches right there so an inch and a half and two inches and I'm just gonna line those up on my paper trimmer and I'm gonna cut those and cut out that corner there we go right there that'll give us an angle as I noticed this corner was sticking through the next window. So that will be uh, this one, then this one, this one. I gotta keep putting them together so 
I get my game plan going here. Then the vanilla one. Then this one. Then this one. I like that. But I also think I need to do something with that corner. I don't like it sticking up there. Um, maybe I can scoot it down a little bit more. Line this up over here and this up over here. Now how far up can I go without it showing? That'll work out okay. It still doesn't show. Okay, so now we can start decorating these. Let me put my pen in here. Now you will have ribbons in here and in here before we seal this up to tie your journal closed. And then you'll have ribbon in here and in here, on the back of here, to wrap around and keep your envelopes closed. And then we'll add something finishing to the back. Okay, so now we can decorate the envelopes. I'm going to set this aside and keep in mind what these are, what paper is up so that these coordinate. But I want to use some book page and some um, solids to kind of break up the the busyness of all of the, the prints. It's a beautiful print, but it's all the prints are pretty busy. So I want to add some solids and I will probably use some more of this gold twine. I love that stuff and I don't have very much of it left. So I'm gonna have to see if I can find some more gold twine somewhere. So if this is going to be this will be the first one down. So let's decorate that one. And we have to keep in mind... Well, get out of my way. <laughs> Set that glue bottle on top of it. Keep in mind that this has to coordinate with that. So, but we got tons of paper. So what I am thinking is... Well, let me play around a little bit with paper cutting and placement, and then I'll be right back so this tutorial doesn't last too long. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I have tentatively laid out my paper choices for these three and these, well, two on this side. I haven't done this one yet, but I wanted to show you on this one. I had a real small die that cut a rectangle, and I just put it on my paper. I measured over from this side. And I glued all three of the pieces I had chosen for this together. And then I laid my die down. And I cut out a window. And then I inked around the edges just to make sure if it wasn't perfectly aligned that none of the white edges showed. Which is a good thing I did because there's a little bit of gray showing. But it definitely matches the paper line and doesn't look obnoxious. So I'm going to glue that on there, I punch out my little notch, of course we have to do the back sides, but this is the layout I have for this page, and this will be a tuck spot, and then, and it has the angle cut, and then I have these papers for the back side. So I'm going to piece all those together and glue them down, and then I'll be back and show you um, and we'll decide what to do with the back side of each envelope and we'll have an insert for each one. Okay, I am back and I have picked out pages for the front and the back of each of them. I haven't glued the back sides on yet, but I wanted to share with you what I'm doing so far just so you can get caught up if you want to create this. So on the first, on the right hand side, the first envelope had a window and I used a small die that I had in my stash just to cut a window out and it doesn't match this one perfectly, but I just took a little piece of sponge and went around the edges with some uh, green, let me see what it is, bundled sage, distress oxide, just so that it wasn't obvious that it was white. And then on the back side, I just glued some, 
another one of the design papers. On the second envelope, I have a pocket and let me grab this scrap right here for an insert. On the back side of that, I am going, I have the, the one I'm going to put there, I'll show you. I have, on this page, I had put a pocket here and um, the, one of the cut aparts it says Fisher Piano, so I wanted to use the piano paper here. But I cut a slot in it and I don't want the cream to show through. So what I did was I took my crocodile and measured in a half an inch from each side. And then I'm going to put this little piece of black artisan down here just to cover the hole and give myself a guideline for a tag or an insert that I put there. Because I don't want it wobbling all over the place. So I'm just going to put it right there along the edge. Straight, I said. And I don't do things straight a lot. So there's that one. And then I'll put a piece on this side. Just like that. And then I want this gold to show through instead of the cream. Like that. So I am going to attach that on both sides and across the top and just place it right here. But you don't want it glued, whoops, you don't want it glued on the bottom. You want it to be open so whatever you stick down in there is going to go through. So when I put the glue on this, I'll glue the top and I can glue the gold, but then I'll glue down here and across the bottom. And then I can put a tag in there that's roughly four inches. So I'm going to attach my glue right there. And on the gold, down the side, and the black. And then just across the bottom. Like that. And you can see I used a black marker along here just so that if this doesn't match perfectly, there's none of that cream showing through. And I'm going to match this up at the top. And leave myself a little margin in there. Just so that when it closes, there's a little play in there. And smooth that down. And we should have an open pocket. Yep. Went all the way to the glue. <laughs> so I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes. And then I'll just flip it over and trim off any extra. And punch this hole again. So that is this one. And it's got this little tuck spot here all the way down. And then you've got your pocket here. This one, of course, has the top pocket, and this one has a top pocket. So when you flip it over, this is going to have this green music paper. And then I'm going to put a flip out on there, like this, down towards the bottom. Actually, I think I had that on the other side. I think I meant for that to go on the other side. Let's go over to this one. Make coffee on that Kleenex. <laughs> so let's flip this over. Here's the other side. 
got another pocket or another window pocket I mean and this one is going to have a window in it like this be a window pocket this is the angle cut that we did and I haven't added any extra to that and on the back side is going to be this paper stripe paper with the rose. I've got to go along here with my black marker. And then, yeah, that's where this was going to go. This is going to have the rose paper and this little flip out here. Like that. So I'll get all those inked and attached and then we'll be ready to put the book together. Alright. Oh, and I did put ribbons on here. I attached the red in the, it's kind of a champagne color, I don't know what it's called. And when I add the pages to each side of here, then we can put it all down together and then trim up this edge. So I'll be back when I'm ready for that and we'll do that together. Okay, I have all my papers added, so now I am ready to add the two um, envelope stacks to this backing sheet and I want them just like this so I'm just going to turn it over and apply glue to the envelopes flaps that is oh come on glue don't fail me now There it comes. Now this one. should be ready to attach it to the backing like that I really like this really 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 like this Put that glue seep it over there okay I'm gonna take this score tape backing off Instead of putting it to this section, I'm going to put the glue on here. So I don't run the risk of getting glue on the green. Put it over that score tape so it doesn't grab right away. And under the ribbon. Okay, here we go. It's now or never. I'm going to match up my bottom. And the side. Now I'm going to get some clips to hold it in place. Should have had that out here.
Should have had some ready for it, huh? Make sure this side is lined up. Got some more, some, some more of these clips somewhere. And put a closed pin over here. See if I can find a couple more. I could need just more. I hope that'll do it. So these ribbons are going to tie up over here. I'm going to let it sit about 15-20 minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, my glue is all set up. So we can open up the folder now, and this is going to be where the journal goes, but I want to trim this off, and I don't want to cut with my knife. Let me open up these pages so that I don't accidentally cut them, and I'm going to Try to go around these curvy edges with my knife carefully. And I may have to go back and I think I'm gonna be more comfortable with the scissors, honestly. So to turn that edge. Make sure I'm not putting, I'm not putting the wrong thing. Okay. Make sure I'm not something else was caught under there and I'm cutting the wrong thing. So glad. Now I can ink it. <coughs> and my dog. Before I do the I need to put ribbon under here to hold the journal part closed, then I can glue these sides shut. So I will do that and cut my journal pages and then I will be back with you 
and we'll put the journal part together. This is turning out really, really cute. I'm very happy with it. So I will see you shortly. The next thing we want to do is glue this back part together. Although I want to get a little bit more ink on the, the top edge of this. A little more, a little more. Not too much. Now we can glue this closed. I think that's good enough. And then we can put the pages in. So we want to glue both sides and across the top. Now you can leave this open if you want a pocket. I'm going to glue mine down. I want to take this backing off. It's just holding the ribbon. Oops. this tape so it doesn't grab too quick. edges. Okay. Now we'll just pin that down together just for a few minutes. Especially this thick edge over here. A little glue. set up just a few minutes and then I'll be back and we'll add the pages. Okay, let's take these off. Should be long enough. Now we can add our pages. So once you've picked out the pages that you want, which I have done, put this back in. Always forget my pen. Okay. So here's the papers I want, upside down. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of position them like I want them. center. Where I've got them folded anyway. And there's the last one. About like that. 
and we need it in the center of the book. It'd be nice to have one of those book cradles, but I don't have one. So what I'm going to do is position it in the center of my book, right where I want it. Clip it together so my pages don't move. Clip that side. And the only one I can't clip is this little one in the middle, but it will be held by the. And this looks like it's slipped a little. I might have to trim that off a little bit. Actually. Let me do that before I put it in. It looks like it's a little bit too long. Thought I had everything just right. And trim just a little bit off of that. And then I'll have to give it a little bit more ink. Oops. Got stuff everywhere. Alright, I want it this way. There, that's better. Okay, to the center. Right there. this side. I have to hold that little one in place. Once I get the string on there, it'll be fine. So, you want to measure your string three times the length of this. One, two, and three. And then we're going to take our awl and I'm just going to, once I take this protective cover off, kind of eyeball it in the middle. And just poke straight through it. I want to make sure it comes out where I want it to. There it is. So there's one, and then I'm going to go about an inch from the top, out right here. And poke it through. There's that. And an inch from the bottom. Or thereabouts. Trying to make sure everything else is out of the way so I don't poke the wrong spot. And there comes that one. Okay, so now we need our needle. Put this back in place. There's my hole. And there's that hole. I hope I made it big enough. Can you see where it is? Oh, there it is. Right there. I'm going to push it through a little bit farther, make sure that hole's big enough for the needle. Okay. I 
I'm going to enlarge this one down here a little bit just to make sure and I'll do the top one too push it through a little bit a little bit farther and it's hard for me to see what it is back into position and you want to leave yourself a little tail on the inside and I showed how to do this once before um, with my other journal that I made but just in case you didn't see that one we'll do it again these strings are getting in my way so now we need to come up through this hole at the bottom All these ties are posing a problem I'm trying to keep this little one in place until I get this wrapped around here get that tight now we're going to go back through this hole we want to make sure we don't split our threads go back through that hole one for the ties. There we go. Pull that through. slack out there. Didn't realize I had. There we go. Pull it up tight. Now I'm going to switch around to this one. Go through the top hole. without sticking myself. That's always a good thing if you don't stick yourself. Come on. There we go. Make sure it's pulled up tight, and it is. And we're going to tuck it up under this one. Make sure everything's taut. Don't want any sagging back here. Okay, now we can take the needle off and we can tie it. like three times the thread was a little bit much. That's what I've always been told is a rule of thumb though, so that's what I did. There we go. I'm going to tie it again and cut these off. Now we can remove these. Now we can tie up 
these brown and cream ones <coughs> and trim them off. I always seem to leave way too much. But we've got room in there for adding pockets and pictures and journaling prompts and things that you might want to add. But I'm going to trim it off a bit. So there we go. That's it without the tags and everything in it. And then I can trim these off some more once we get it all full. But isn't that pretty? Just so pretty. Alright, that is it for the tutorial. I will um, make some tags and inserts and then I'll come back with the walkthrough and you'll see that prior to the tutorial so that if you want to make one you'll have an opportunity to see it first. Alright, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and share pictures if you make it. I'd love to see them. Bye-bye.